Okay guys, so we've been talking about matter and as you know, um, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space and today we want to examine some of the properties of matter and try to determine what, how matter behaves under certain conditions. So uh, I have here some steel wool. We've been playing around with it already. We already talked about uh, it was compressed out and then we fluffed it out and we noticed that the mass didn't change there. So uh, we're going to actually try it. Uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of combustion because that's always fun. So we're going to start by just massing some basic steel wool here on a watch glass. And we have an initial mass of uh, 32.93 grams. So we'll write down 32.93 grams. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, Burn it in a, in a flame. We're going to see uh, see what the reaction looks like, and then we're going to try the mass again at the end and uh, see see if we have a change of mass here with the with the combustion. Okay, we're here in the lab. Uh, we're going to try the uh, burning the steel wool glue. We'll see what happens uh, first. We're going to check our uh, setup, make sure that we uh, have a good attachment, that there's no cracks or anything in our tubing, uh, that our gas is turned uh, ready to go. We got our striker handy, so we're going to go ahead and turn the gas on. We're going to go ahead and light our flame there. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, ignite our, our little bit of steel wool here. And we want to very quickly hold it over the watch glass because we don't want to lose any of the sparks that are uh, forming. So we're just going to try to ignite it and then hold it over the, the watch glass and let the uh, reaction uh, progress here. So. We notice if you look closely here, we're actually getting a, a little bit of a color change in the steel wool. So you notice we have a little bit of color change here. So let's uh, take it back over and we'll figure out the mass and see if we have any uh, change there. We'll go ahead and turn everything back off. On our experiment, uh, we noticed that the uh, the color of our uh, steel wool has changed a little bit. It's gone from kind of a shiny silver to a dull uh, grayish color. Okay, so we're going to try the mass again and we're going to see. When we get here, the mass before was 32.93, and now we have 32.95. Hmm. So we actually had a slight increase in mass. So uh, um, it's, it feels like it's cooled down. Everything's nice and cool. So the mass has increased a little. So where did our extra matter come from? Because we've already determined that matter, uh, we're not gaining mass in any of these, and we're not losing mass. They should be about the same. So when we had this reaction and we had this burning happen, um, that mass must have come from somewhere. So where did it come from or where did we gain that mass from? Uh, I want to let you guys try to think about that and figure out where you think that extra mass may have come from. Steel wool. We had fun with this one, right? We had to burn some steel wool. So we had a chunk of steel wool beforehand, pretty small. We had a little piece of steel wool kind of spread out here and it had uh, a, a certain number of particles inside of it. So we'll do Um, and then what we did is we held this over top of a Bunsen burner flame. And when we held it over top of the flame, it sparked, it burned, it was awesome. And uh, the color changed, right? So we know that the color changed and uh, the mass changed. We had a gain of mass and... Um, uh, so something happened, right? Where did the mass come from? Uh, and what's needed to burn something? What's, what's needed to make this whole transition happen? Because uh, something happened here. Uh, and, and we got to try to account for that change in mass, the increase in mass from the beginning to the end. So there must have been some other kind of particle um, uh, involved at the beginning so that at the end, when we have this new, the steel wool size, the, mat, the volume's the same, right? We definitely still have the original uh, particles somehow, but we had to add some more mass to it, okay? And the color changed, so it had to come from somewhere. 
And so we need some other type of particle. So we're going to represent this as um, what is around the steel wool right now? Well, there, there's always air, right? There's always air in the room. There's always air around us. And there's lots of stuff in the air, a couple different compounds. Um, and there's one maybe specific we are interested in right now uh, that is involved with uh, burning things. And, and uh, some of you might know what it is. It's involved in us breathing as well. Um, but it is oxygen. We represent it as O2. Okay, so we have oxygen floating right out here. Well, some of that oxygen must have been involved in this reaction. So we put the steel wool in the flame. It sparked. It did something. But some of this oxygen must have also been involved in that process. So at the end, we have some uh, uh, oxygen bonding with the uh, magnesium. Now, not all of it. There's probably some that was unburnt. We didn't burn all of the, the uh, magnesium. But we have some that combine together here. And uh, so we have a little bit of extra mass that was added in. Now, do we use all the air? No. There's definitely still air around the outside. That All that air was not used up. Um, but we did involve some of the air, some of the oxygen, with some of the, the steel wool. And we definitely had an increase of mass from beforehand until afterwards.